Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back. Hope you're having a fantastic day. So many of you enjoyed the video yesterday, the uh, Papadanya Papadanya, <laughs> featuring the Russian tank with two barrels. The TD game that shocked the entire World of Tanks community. I thought I would give equal time to uh, two other nations and feature two what I consider uh, tank destroyers that are difficult to do well in. Okay. And uh, you might be saying, T95, really? Yeah, it's, uh, it's difficult to do well in. We're going to watch the T95 and then another one. Two turretless, turretless TDs. And uh, uh, both amazing games. And he says, thank you for that guy letting him Because <laughs> you don't want to get in a T95's way. It takes forever for him to get anywhere. And his friend in the T9, other T95 hasn't even pressed the W. <laughs> Kia. This is a Palo. Palo. Now this team has two T95s and the other team, what do they get? An object 705 and a... What? A BZ-68? That's fair, right? What is it? Now 705? Oh, they get a T95. T95 and another thing. Okay. That's... It's close. Yeah. That makes sense. Object 704 and T95. Okay, Object 704 I think is better. But uh, the Doom Turtle. Let's just watch. Okay, let's watch. He's got the surfboards on the back. He's heading for a wave. He's going to the North Shore, going to Sunset Beach. Boop. Sunset Beach arrived. Or maybe Waimea Bay. Waimea Bay, Sunset Beach. Pipeline. Banzai Pipeline. I've been to all those spots. They're just incredible. If you've never been, you have to go. You have to go, guys. And I've been to... Um, uh, I, ooh. Little bugger, he's still there. <laughs> I've been to uh, uh, Pipeline. What's What beach is Pipeline on? It's know it as Pipeline. Uh, I've been there. In the winter and seeing it going off you know 20 20 foot curling wave uh, watching a, the expert surf on it and in the winter right and then I've been there in the summer uh, flat as a pancake and you can go out and swim crystal clear beautiful warm water uh, and you can see the the reef well they say the reef it's a dead reef there's nothing alive on that reef <laughs> uh, but uh, you could see the reef you could, it's very shallow you could see why the uh, the wave breaks where it does oh 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 that's the one guy you didn't want to see but if you aim carefully boom you could bounce and he can pen you both aim carefully but I think it would have been better for you to hit the um, commander's hatch on top my friend I know the weak spot on the bottom too, but it's very difficult. Let's see. Yeah, okay, you got it. That's good. Very good. Yeah, so you can. Oh, 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 oh. Someone, there's the object 705. Turn around, turn around, turn around. Turn around. Yeah, you see the reef. There's two reefs actually. Sometimes it breaks, and then when the swell gets bigger, it even breaks further out. That was just an amazing wave. Nice. Surprised the object. The object is surprised. Are you surprised? Now he's going to try and pay you back. Oh, but he hit your track because he rushed his shot. Now you have time. Pull out there and, and aim. Aim, 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 aim. A lower plate. Boom. Yes. Gotcha. And uh, you can uh, just swim around in the crystal clear water in the uh, in the summer. Why is that? It was just luck? No, no, no. That's how it works. Oh. Oh, this guy's having a good game. It's um, it's the pattern in Hawaii, right? If uh, a lot of people don't know, uh, and if you're not into the water, it doesn't matter, right? But I'm always in the water, either uh, uh, surfing or snorkeling or just swimming, uh, boogie boarding now, with the leash and the flippers, right? Getting out on some of the bigger waves on a on a small board. Whew, that's fun. <laughs> uh, but so what you do uh, in in Hawaii? Or anywhere in the world, but it is in particular in Hawaii. Uh, in the winter, it's it's winter in the northern hemisphere, and uh, there's storms in the winter. 
in the Aleutian Islands around Alaska in the Ring of Fire those islands that head down to Japan up there in the northern uh, hemisphere in the winter there's storms churns up the water makes waves and that swell comes from the north and heads south uh, and it hits Hawaii which is in the middle of the Pacific and it hits Hawaii make them pay make them pay make them pay don't waste your shot yeah oh, oh, oh let's just enjoy this first here comes another one two T-95s and an IS-3 fighter come on oh he bounced you yeah yeah he already shot he already shot there you go oh so the, the, uh, the waves are created in the north, in the storms, and they head south, thousands of miles, uh, and they become ocean swell. When you leave the storm, it's, it's not waves in the ocean, you know, not like turbulence. It becomes ocean swell, up and down, up and down. And the swell uh, moves in a southerly direction, hits the northern shore of Hawaii, uh, and breaks on all those beautiful surf breaks. Pipeline, Waimea Bay. Uh, in, in the summer, it's the opposite. In the summer, uh, in the northern hemisphere, in the summer, it's calm. There's, there are there is no swell generated in the north. The northern shore is calm, but it's winter in the southern hemisphere. In my summer, in the northern hemisphere, there's um, uh, storms down in Antarctica, and it creates the waves. The swell that comes from the south moves up. So some of the best surfing days I've ever had in my life uh, are in Hawaii in the summer. Uh, because I'm not an expert, I can't, I couldn't do pipeline if it's 27 feet. <laughs> there are even 20 feet. I could do it if it's, e even on a, if it's not big, it's a critical wave, right? It's critical. You, if you miss, you have to know what you're doing, right? I've surfed, uh, um, boogie board at some really cool hollow waves so it's a blast a little bit scared of uh of the pipeline when it's a uh, say seven eight feet yeah ten feet yeah but uh, it can get big really fast i'm not on i'm not in the water on the north shore in the winter if it's a big big swell but in the summer when the swell comes from the south it's always smaller and if you just go to uh southern Oahu or any of the islands and there's not critical uh, breaks like in in the North Shore where where you have these big hollow waves and I know there's a world of tanks game going on but we're going to continue with our discussion so in the North American summer when those waves come from the south and they hit Waikiki which is a more uh, um, more of a harbor long beach with lots it's very sheltered and that rolling swell comes in there you can have five six foot waves that are just beautiful but they're not critical they don't hollow out but beautiful waves that you can uh, catch them way out and surf in for half a mile uh, you can have fantastic surfing days on the south shore in our summer the southern hemisphere winter in hawaii right summer surfing for more intermediate level guys like me we missed your game buddy palo but uh I, I think you did pretty good. Everyone that was watching saw it. I just did. I was busy. This year in February, I will be on the island of Maui, Hawaii, on the northwest shore. Not the full north shore where the full pounding northern swells hit, but on the northwest side. Uh, and I'm going to bring the boogie board and maybe have some fun there. Okay? It's going to be good. Speaking of fun, Theo from the Kekel clan is in the Yag Tiger the Yag Tiger. Turtless TD, difficult to do well in, but he is going to show us how. Here he goes. And um, what's the area called? Napili. Uh, it's up. Uh, there's a there's an area there where there's like four fingers of lava that come out, and each between each finger there's a bay. There's beaches there that the uh, the surf is. Uh, it's fantastic. Well, for boogie boarding, it's fantastic. And you're not exposed on the north, so that you're not getting the full force of the north as well. It's, it, they, it, the waves hit the point and curl into the into the base. So it's uh, snap up. Don't fall off the cliff. So that's going to be fun. That's another uh, really good place to go. 
Oh, this is a German tank, so it misses quite often. <laughs> so that's going to be fun, right? And uh, there's a one particular surf break there on the northwest coast of Maui. Uh, what's the place called? It's a it's a really popular snorkeling uh, place because it has a live reef on the on the both sides of the bay. It's called Aluka Bay or Hana Hanamana Bay. No, not the not the one in Waikiki. The one. It, some, I forget the name. You guys let me know. But you go there in the summer and it's flat and crystal clear and it's fantastic snorkeling and diving. Uh, and there's a fringing reef on both sides. Uh, in the winter you can't snorkel because there's 10 foot waves rolling through and it's a, it's a really long right-handed break. It comes to the point and it starts, it curls and it's hollow but it's not critical like pipeline. You can get on. Like a, you don't have to be a, a kamikaze. You can get on the wave before it breaks and then get into the hollow, into the curl, right? Into the pocket. Whereas pipeline, you, you got to get on and you're in. There's no, it's critical. There's no time to waste. What's that bay called? Someone, some of you guys that are from the United States that you're probably in Hawaii watching, let me know what it's called. And hopefully uh, that will be going off with not too big uh, a swell, maybe six feet six seven feet and I'll be I'll be out there uh, bothering the surfers right you have to have etiquette though when you go out there if you're on a boogie board and if you've got the proper equipment right the fins and a really not not a cheap boogie board like you get in Mexico at an all-inclusive here have a boogie board right it's a, a prop it's like a big wave surfing boogie board body board you get out there and you kind of know that you have to defer to the if there's a guy on a on, on a board and he's paddling to try and catch the wave you don't you don't like kick right beside him and get in his way you you defer to the surfers but there's a wave coming every 10 seconds and there'll be one that uh, that they will all miss or they've all gone and then and then the, and then I go I don't like I'm not gonna fight for a wave with some some big Hawaiian dude. So uh, wish me luck, wish me luck. And so far he's missed every shot because he's in a German tank. It's a sniper tank. <laughs> His team has no map control. Everything's crap. But I'm telling you about my potential, uh, my holiday, upcoming holiday. Klaus, why are you always going on holidays? This, this is my life, guys, this is my life. My life is to, um, he missed again. Oh, he missed again. He missed again. Uh-huh. My uh, life is to uh, wander the globe and uh, and do whatever I want. And while I do whatever I want anywhere in the world, I gain experiences. Right? I, I experience things and I uh, and he missed again. And I like meet people and have conversations and engage in activities and all of those things get stored in my brain and those become uh, like the database for uh, the, the, the knowledge that, that I draw from when I create for you, right? So uh, if, if I didn't lead such a leisurely uh, uh, amazing life, um, my commentary would be boring. Think of it that way. Uh, the, the more I enjoy myself and, and travel the world and go on holidays, and he missed again, uh, the better the content is for you guys. See? That's how it works. If I was an accountant uh, working uh, at an accounting firm, the, this would be the commentary. So far he's missed seven out of the eight shots he's taken. Let's review those shots in order. The first shot, missed. The second shot, missed. The third shot, possibly bounced. The target was not lit, but probably missed. This shot hit. That makes two shots out of eight. You know, that wouldn't be very entertaining, right? I'd probably be a good accountant. I couldn't do accounting. I, you know, I would account one week and then be done. You know what job I should get? Okay, this is the uh, this, but I, I 
I would need your help. I would need all of your uh, your help because you guys probably all work, right? You're all the, the drudgery of your day and going into work in, in the office or whatever. And, and then in, in the evening, you you watch one of my videos for entertainment or in the morning before you before you put your head down and drudge your way into the office, you watch my video in the morning for entertainment as, to, as a highlight to make you happy, right? Because the, the rest of the day is miserable when you're at work. No, not all of you. <laughs> oh, we missed again. But if that's the case, you probably hate where you work, and everyone in charge where you work is an idiot. Am I am I right? So what I want, what I think I should do, maybe, is start a, a consulting firm. I don't have to start a firm. A Klaus Kellerman Consulting, and then um, these firms could hire me, and I would come over. To their firm uh, and explain to them uh, everything that they're doing wrong uh, and through just a, a couple of days of observing what what happens in whatever the business is I could uh, explain to them well you're doing these three things wrong and if you did this and this uh, you would have this improvement and this is what you're trying to do and th these four things are getting in the way and uh, and you need to change this and this. I, I would be able to observe whatever it is that the company does or is trying to do. Uh, if there's or, any issue that they have, and very quickly just explain to them uh, why things are, are miserable and horrible, and, and I would uh, improve. Improve the company easily just through uh, a simple observation and, and giving them advice. And I, you know, I charge whatever, uh, two, three hundred grand to for three or four days to set the company I could turn any company around simply by observing their operations for a couple three days talking to some staff talking to some key people try uh, learning how the most important decisions are made what are the decisions being made uh, out of those decisions which 80% of those decisions are a waste of time and that you shouldn't bother with or what are the 20% of decisions that are the most important so that the company could increase their profits, blah, 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 do this and that. Uh, talk to him, talk to that, observe this, do that, write a this, uh, figure it out, uh, change this, uh, talk to so-and-so, try this, try that. Is this possible? Is this legal? Is this safe? Blah, blah, blah. Within three days, okay, do this, this, and this. Companies turned around and making uh, three times as much money. The Klaus Kellerman um, no BS analysis tune-up for any struggling company. So you guys, if your company's struggling, uh, talk to your boss and uh, tell them to con contact me and I'll, uh, I will set you on the right, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll fix it. The fixer. Clap on, clap off. The fixer. I need a, a new jingle. That couldn't be the... Uh, uh, if I put a commercial on TV, I couldn't use that. <laughs> like, for instance, if Wargaming hired me, right? If Wargaming... And I would do... For Wargaming, I would do it for free. For you guys. If they just let me come there, and they promise not to poison me on the plane on the way over, uh, and just allowed me to observe how the company operates, Sit in, in a couple of meetings. I'll figure out what, why, what decisions they use, what criteria when they decide to release a new premium tank. Uh, talk to the programmers a little bit. Talk to the guy that's uh, running the matchmaking. This and that. And uh, I would de then just give them some advice. And immediately the game would be uh, uh, twice as much fun and uh, more people would start playing. I'd make a few little tweaks. I don't know what those are yet. He missed again. I might make this tank a little bit more accurate. That might be one of the tweaks. Uh, Wargaming, you need to make this uh, Yagd Tiger. Just a little bit. Just a little tweak. <laughs> right, so, you know, do, keep doing this. this the, the player base likes this. Try and have this kind of uh, philosophy when you release premium tanks. Uh, make the matchmaker lean more a bit like this. 
uh, get the guys that are uh, working on the maps for you, fire them all and hire new guys that can actually make maps. Right? Um, it's just a few little things, a few little tweaks. And it, you know, they go da, 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 and then they do them, and all of a sudden, uh, everyone will be saying, wow, this game's a lot more fun. I wonder what happened. It seems like a lot more fun. Maybe I'll get my friends to play. Hey, right? simple. <laughs> How did we go from surfing, uh, uh, summer swells and winter swells in Hawaii, to a consulting company to uh, fixing this game easily? How did we figure that out? <laughs> oh, here comes an E75. He waited till all his teammates were dead. And then decided that, you know, it's probably a good time for him to go now because he's got all the armor. Well, I've got all the armor, so I'll, I'll let all my teammates that don't have armor move forward and die. And now it's my turn. Oh, I'm starting to realize why they died, he's thinking. Maybe they got shot just like this. Oh, daddy, uh, my light bulb went off again. He's coming. He's coming. Oh, he's getting close. He's getting close. You know where you have to hit him. Right there. They know where he is now. <laughs> oh, how did he... Where did he come from? Oh, he's finally spotted. How? Of all of, After all that, now he's spotted. He doesn't give a shit. I suppose there's no one left to shoot him. <laughs> Papa Danya, Papa Danya. Remember that? Just shoot. There you go. You're winning now. You missed like 15 shots because you're German tank, but now the game is almost over. You're winning. We need to wrap this up. Bullseye. <laughs> I would fix the game. Uh, some of the things they may not be what they want fixed, right? Like, I would ensure that the games don't snowball into uh, lopsided victories. You don't have to tweak the RNG so the winning team gets better RNG. Maybe you could tweak the RNG so the losing team gets a little bit better RNG. Then it would be like, and if they, all the games would last 14 minutes. They would all be close nail biters. Nah, that'd be too good. You don't want to do that. We like it the way it is. We like the three minute games. How do you expect the wheeled vehicles to perform if the game's not three minutes? <laughs> oh, he spotted. Did you see that? The artillery out spotted him. Because he was in a bush. Huh? That's a smart SPG player. Okay? Yesterday's video. Those guys. The two SPG players. Clueless. This guy. And he missed. He didn't. You know, he's not going to win. But that's what you do in an SPG at the end of the game. You sit in a bush and you don't move and you wait and you're going to detect the enemy first. And if this was a close game, one-on-one, -on -one, and this guy only had like 50 HP, you sit in the bush, you wait, the guy comes, you detect him, boom, maybe you win. Right? Now, but now maybe he ran because he got spotted. So he relocated, he's in another bush now. And he could actually, no, he drowned himself. I don't know, so this, the conversation went a little bit sideways today. You know, that happens. This is, uh, this is reality, right? You, this, this happens occasionally. Uh, I hope it's okay. It's, it's just the way it is. Let me know about any company. If you work for a company and you need some consulting done, uh, if you're struggling, if there's a, an issue at the company that needs resolving or improving, uh, we can uh, we can certainly do that uh, easily, uh, guaranteed results, and uh, uh, you just have to uh, contact me so that we can make the arrangements, and I will uh, I'll, I'll improve your company and uh, and therefore also your life. If you work there, it'll be more fun to work there after I fix things. Okay, I'll catch you guys on the next one.